Bokish and welcome to Marty's Garage. So, um, kind of at a standstill with the MG right now. I need to sandblast some of the parts and stuff. And uh, so I, uh, I had bought spark plugs and stuff with the meaning of doing it right away to the Jeep, but um, I didn't. <laughs> but it, it runs fine and everything, but I figured, got these spark plugs and stuff, I might as well uh, replace them. So, uh, as you can see over here, I've got, uh, I've got six cylinders, so I've got six spark plugs. Um, uh, here's one thing you, uh, I've, I've done the other five spark plugs, but uh, uh, one thing you want to do is, uh, well, you don't really need to do it, but there's, uh, uh, they say you should always gap your spark plugs. Um, and what that is, is it's just the, uh, can you see good there? Yep. The gap between the, uh, the electrode and the uh, other thing. What I should set the gap to, so 35 thousandths of an inch gap. Um, or you can just Google it or something and just find a couple sources that, that match up on the internets. <laughs> and uh, so 35 thousandths, and it looks like I'm a little bit smaller than uh, 30 thousandths right now. Um, so to do that, I'm just going to pry up a little bit. 35 thousandths. Um, if, uh, if it's too big, you can usually uh, just do something like this. You just... Uh, Give it some taps. You do them one at a time because uh, uh, you don't want to get the firing order out of whack. Um, so instead of going bong bong bing, it'll go bing bing bong, and uh, your engine just won't run. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't like that. So bad idea to pull everything off and do the spark plugs and put it back together unless you have pictures or something to, or a manual or something to resort back to. So I'll just do a okay. quick update. Um, so I'm about uh, halfway done. You can see the, uh, the the ones with black wires are the ones I've done so far. And uh, I thought I'd uh, 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 stop right here because you can see these five plugs are pretty easy to get at. Um, but over here, uh, uh, the cylinder number one plug is kind of kind of hard to get at so uh, uh, at first I was thinking I'd have to take this apart but uh, um, that I'd see if I can get it just by using a big long extension and, and that seems to seems to look like it's gonna work so um, just got a long extension on here and tried to get the angle lined up right so we could uh, fit it over the plug and uh, so now I'll be able to take this one out. Right. Um, so I did them all except for uh, except for one. I figured you didn't want to watch the whole thing because it's pretty much just me doing the same thing six times. So, but uh, here's one of the ones that I, I took out previously. And so you can kind of see the, uh, the electrode there. And now here's the new one. You can tell, I mean, this doesn't look like it's necessarily uh, like it's been uh, burning too hot or too cold or anything, but uh, it just does look like it's work. It's just worn down, and these kind of needed to be replaced. But the the gap is quite a bit bigger on this one. So, uh, and if you look at the uh, one of the nice things about doing these one at a time is all these uh, uh, these wires are different lengths. So. Um, as you take one off, you can just match it up to what should go in there. Um, so I've only got one left. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this off. And this will come off. And that just pulls out. And some of these are kind of stuck on there, so let's see if this one comes off easy. There we go. So. Since it, these don't appear like they've ever been changed, um, and because uh, I don't know, unless they had it done at a dealership or something. Since it says Mopar on these, these are the like the stock Mopar or the stop, the stop, the stock uh, like Jeep Chrysler uh, Dodge parts. Um, they all say Mopar on them. So um, yeah. Uh, but as a result, these were kind of crusted onto the plugs, so if I turn a little bit, that broke it loose, and 
and I was able to pull it off. So got that off. Now I've got to take the take the plug out. And uh, so it's just a standard uh, spark plug socket. And uh, got a little rubber thing in here, so. Um, when I pull this socket out, it'll take the whole plug and stuff with it. And I, I don't know, even on the ones that are easy to get at, I like using this extension just so I can keep the angle right and I don't, the ratchet head isn't up against the engine block. So it's nice to do it like this. And, uh, So I'm all, I always try to be careful to make sure the the threads are going in properly because if it's one thing you don't want to screw up, it's the uh, it's the threads because <laughs> so you don't want to over tighten these um, or screw them up or anyway because it's kind of a kind of a pain in the ass if you have to redo them. I haven't had to do it yet, so. Um, we haven't but, started the car yet. Huh? So we haven't started the car yet. Well, I haven't stripped out the spark plug oh, okay. uh, threads before. Um, but I'd rather not start doing things like that. <laughs> so, and I think there's torque specs for these. I just uh, like to kind of hand tighten them so they're not too tight, <laughs> not too loose, I guess. Um, because same thing, you don't want to over tighten it because it could pull the threads apart. So, uh, so then I've got to route this wire in here. Um, so, as as I said, this uh, this one we kind of uh, kind of gets looped under and around. Uh, let me see. Can't yeah, see. There. Um, so. I'll go under here. Just uh, push this onto the distributor. And uh, you can kind of hear that snap. They, uh, when you get it seated properly, you can, you can kind of feel it click on. And then I'll just push it on the plug. And same thing there. Uh, uh, goes on real easy and you can just kind of kind of feel a snap on you'll probably know right away if you don't get them seated properly because you won't have one one of your cylinders won't be firing but uh, uh, I don't know that's about it uh, it's a easy repair anybody could do I'm not sure how many thousand miles they uh, uh, they recommend you do I think it's like 20,000 or something like that but I honestly usually never do it <laughs> um, it's just it's just the fact that we just got this new car, and um, I kind of figured that, you know, it's got 160,000 miles on it. it. Might be a good thing to do just to get it out of the way. Um, and lo and behold, these these uh, hadn't been changed before or anything. So, um, yeah. So that's one little bit of maintenance that you can do. Um, but other than that, uh, thanks for watching. As always, uh, go ahead and send your feedback to martysgarage at gmail.com and uh, the show is available on iTunes.